This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2522, The Lord of the Rings Guide to Getting Stuff Done by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. And I'm Justin Mollick. This is the show where I usually read to you, kind of like an audiobook. But on Sundays, I think it's nice to share an extra episode from another podcast where we read to you. Today's comes from my brother's show, Optimal Health Daily. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts, of course. So without further ado, let's hear this episode read by Dr. Neil of Optimal Health Daily and followed by his commentary as we optimize your life. The Lord of the Rings Guide to Getting Stuff Done by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Nerd alert. What can be said about the Lord of the Rings trilogy that hasn't already been said? It's easily one of the greatest literary achievements of our time and one heck of an underdog story, which I love. Sure, it's fun to lose yourself for an afternoon in Tolkien's Middle Earth, but have you ever considered taking a few lessons from these imaginary characters and applying them to your own life? You can learn a lot more from Frodo and the Fellowship than you might realize. Wow, Frodo and the Fellowship, that sounds like a really bad tribute band. I'm going to teach you how to use the Lord of the Rings to help you get stuff done in your life, whether it's losing weight, getting a new job, winning a competition, starting a side business, and more. So, let's do this. What's your one ring? While trying to destroy the one ring, Frodo ran into orcs, giant spiders, ring wraiths, traveled thousands of miles, and almost died approximately a million times. Through all of this adversity, though, he managed to keep his eye on the prize, and eventually save all of Middle-earth. Oh, and he did it barefoot. What's your one ring? It's something like lose 50 pounds. Maybe it's run a marathon, or pack on 15 pounds of muscle. Whatever your goal is, find a way to take one step towards that goal every single day. Frodo always knew exactly where he needed to go, Mordor, and exactly what he needed to do, throw the ring into the fires of Mount Doom. So, all of his steps and goals were in that direction. Once you've decided where to go and what to do, it's much easier creating a plan to actually get there. Now, as for the kind of steps you take, I don't care if they're what about Bob baby steps or massive hops, skips, and jumps. Just find a way to make a little bit of progress. If you backtrack or get lost, find the path and keep going. One step at a time, my friend. My one step at a time. Push yourself. As Sam and Frodo were making their way beyond the Shire, Sam stopped moving at one point and declared, If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. For somebody that's never been outside of his comfort zone, this must have been terrifying. He later found out that he'd have to go all the freaking way to Mordor to protect Frodo. I wouldn't be surprised if Sam was wearing diapers under that tunic because he was so scared. Doesn't matter. You know what does matter? He did it. You might have never run a 5K before. You might have never been in a gym before, lifted weights, or taken a yoga class. Heck, maybe you've never asked out a girl before. Whatever it is, everything outside of your shire will scare you. That's part of life. Until you step outside your comfort zone, unless you push yourself harder than you pushed yesterday, nothing will change. There's nothing wrong with staying safe, but I'd like you to challenge yourself whenever possible. You'd be amazed what will come of it. Small victories over small fears can help build momentum towards bigger challenges. And momentum is a powerful thing. Have a fellowship. Frodo had Aragorn, Gimli, Legolas, his three hobbit buddies, and Boromir, boo, to accompany him on his quest to destroy the ring. They protected him, motivated him, listened to him, inspired him, befriended him, told him when he was wrong, and even let him go do his own thing when necessary. Without this crew, there is no way in heck Frodo survives more than 10 minutes. So, who's in your fellowship? Do you have friends to confide in? Parents to hold you accountable? A wife who will ask you how your training is going? Find a way to get positive people around you who will make you a better person. I have been fortunate enough to have a great circle of friends, and I owe a lot of my success and happiness to having them around. Now, what if you don't have a great group of immediate friends who are supporting you in your quest? Thankfully, the internet is here to help you out. I met some amazing people through this website, dozens of other bloggers, and hundreds of other readers who are helping each other improve their lives from halfway around the globe. You keep me accountable. You motivate me. You even pick me up when I miss a workout. It's fascinating and a great thing to be a part of, and I encourage you to find people to help you do the same. 
Start a free blog. Tell your coworkers about your goals. Email me and let me know how I can help. We're all in this together and we're more powerful as a group than any of us could be alone. Do the best with what you have. While traveling through the desolate and dangerous mines of Moria, Frodo started complaining about his situation to Gandalf, talking about how he wished the ring in this crazy quest had never fallen into his lap. Gandalf came back with a line that will stick with me forever. Quote, So do all who live to see such time, but that is not for them to decide. All you have to decide is what to do with that time that is given to you. And that's why Gandalf is the man. No matter your age, no matter your appearance, no matter your genetic history, no matter your current predicament, you have to remember that your hand has already been dealt. You can't cry over spilled milk, you can't complain about the past, and you can't worry about what happened five minutes ago. You can only control what to do from this moment, right now, onward. Draw a line in the sand today and tell yourself that from now on, you're going to be a different person. You can't control what already happened, but you sure as heck can't control what's going to happen from now on. You've been given the opportunity to live a life on this planet to the best of your ability. In the grand scheme of the universe, that's pretty freaking awesome. Make the most of it. Set out today. You've got your quest laid out in front of you, you've got a good fellowship of friends to support you, and you're willing to push yourself further than you've been. Now, it's time to take action. No matter how daunting your quest might appear, find a way to take one step closer. Don't worry about yesterday or tomorrow. Do what you can with the time that has already been given to you today. You just listened to the post titled The Lord of the Rings Guide to Getting Stuff Done by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I'm so very sorry for those awful impersonations. Hopefully you were able to listen past that and get to the heart of what Steve was trying to say. There are many out there that believe that books like The Wizard of Oz, The Lord of the Rings trilogy are wonderful analogies for life. Many believe that even though these stories are, of course, very fictional, they are spiritual journeys to which we can relate, that they're metaphors for our life path. And Steve echoed that perfectly in this post. I was talking with someone the other day, and somehow this quote came to my mind. This person was telling me about their fears and how they were nervous pursuing this new avenue in their life. And something I said to them was, well, think about it this way. Imagine yourself on your last day of life. I know it's morbid, but bear with me here. Will you look back at this moment and say, oh, I'm so bummed I tried that new avenue because it really didn't work out for me? Or will you say, I'm so bummed that I didn't just try it? And the response from my friend was, I'll probably be more bummed if I didn't just try it. We talked about this earlier in the week. Fear can get in the way. Fear can stop you from trying a new workout or even just getting to the gym because it's intimidating but you have to push yourself a little bit further than your comfort zone sometimes. So if you want a different result, you've got to change something. All right, that'll do it from me for today. I'll be back here tomorrow for our usual Friday Q&A. So stay tuned for that, where your optimal life awaits.